Okay, when I left off, I basically stopped talking about Aurelius with the focus on the plagues and how Commodus was a bad guy, but I didn't really explain anything about Commodus yet. Um, but there's more I need to cover about this to show you just how much Leviticus 26 is being depicted in a satire with these words by Peter for this time. Now, Paul had already done his own version of this, okay? But we're, ta we're focusing now on Peter's. If you want to see Paul's version of it, I already did separate videos on that in the GGS series beginning around episode 11a. Uh, and uh, hopefully I broke each video down so you can tell from just looking at the playlist what period of time is covered. You might have to look at the video descriptions to know because I did cover it in the video description so you could save time. But there was another big characteristic of this time. First of all, just a little brief review. You got the plague being brought from Parthia all the way to Rome by the troops over land infecting everybody as they go. That's why the plague kept occurring in Rome. Because when everybody in Rome died of that first wave of plague, other people would come into Rome, okay, and die of it. Now, I don't know how much you know about plague, but a person who contracts the plague can either contract it as a carrier, this is true of any kind of disease, um, any contagious disease, you can contract the disease, but for some reason in your particular biology, you actually don't get sick but what you become is a carrier of the disease. So everywhere you go, you're spreading the disease even though you yourself aren't sick, so nobody knows you're carrying it. And these are troops, okay? They were crack troops that had to be mustered in order to fight against Parthia. And the troops obviously weren't sick because they made it all the way back to Rome. So where what happens once they get in Rome? Okay, they go out to their other posts. And where are those other posts? Well, in Germany, for example, which would happen in quick order, because this is 166, and by 169, I so tear. Is that pregnant or what? By 169, they have to go out to the Danube. They have to go out to the provinces in the west because there's an incursion and even an invasion of Italy going on by the barbarians in the west. They're coming toward what? Plague Rome. They're coming toward it. So the troops are going out of Rome to protect it. And what are they doing? They are still infected with the plague. They are infecting the Western invaders. And the Western invaders, of course, don't know. And where were the apostate Christians during this time? Oh, a whole bunch of them were in the West, headed by Irenaeus. Later headed by Tertullian. In the east, you had Hegesippus, that jerk, and you had Justin Martyr, but Justin Martyr's just died. Okay, he died in 165. Total anti Semite jerk. Grew up in, you know, the east, grew up in the Syrian region. Okay? but in the West. So God is bringing the plague from Parthia all the way to where? Germany, the Gauls, it was called Gauls then. Germany and France. I think Irenaeus was based in Lyon. Okay, I might be mixing him up with someone else. You see the point? God brings the plague to the Christians. 
who were largely in the center and the western part of the Roman Empire. God brought it because their faith was in their uniting philosophy with the Bible, which they didn't know the Bible. They didn't have faith in the Bible. They had faith in their own lies, which they were making up by the dozen. And if you look in the uh, Church Hall of Shame section of Ephesians 1 Reparse, which you can access through any of these links, okay? <coughs> Just search for Church Hall of Fame on that page, and you'll find the section. I've indexed, I've given links to ccel.org, which is, you know, Calvin College, their own store of the Church Fathers' writings. You can read for yourself how bad these people were, by name, with specific sections to their writings. Read it for yourself how bad they were, so you'll know why God brought the plague. Okay? He brought the plague, 166, it comes to Rome as a result of the victory over Parthia. And then, in 169, you've got an invasion, invasion of Italy for the first time, <coughs> um, by the barbarians, you know, beyond the Danube. And so the troops are now leaving Rome and spreading their plague out to the west, which is where a lot of Christians were, a lot of the apostate Christians were. So now are you beginning to understand why Peter wrote his exit window here, okay? That was the exit window, up here highlighted in black, okay, right here highlighted it. Now just, okay, 151 to 169, get out of Dodge. 169 is when the plague goes to the west. <clears throat> so get out, get out of the Roman Empire, period, okay? Just get out as far away as you can go. That's why Peter's warning them about the plague because God has to judge. He has to judge the pagans and he has to judge the Christians. The Christians are in a state of civil war. Within Rome, the pagans were sick to death of the apostate Christians causing trouble. There were a lot of local uprisings and Aurelius, okay, who's ruling at this time all the way to here, he allows it. He allows the punishment to go on. I mean, he personally wanted to be tolerant to religion, but you know when people make obnoxious stinks about themselves and upset the local polities, well, then he has to let it happen. So a lot of there there were a lot of there was a lot of local inspired persecution going on with respect to certain individuals who were obnoxious, like Okay, Justin Martyr, good example. Like Hegesippus, whose writings were, were, you know, trying to politicize Christianity. Okay, like Irenaeus, who is out in, you know, France. Okay, then you got Hermas and Tatian and Athenagoras and Clement of Alexandria. Of course, he's later, he's just a kid at this time. And Tertullian was just a kid at this time. But that's what they grew up under. So instead of learning the proper lesson of it in Leviticus 26 and Deut Deuteronomy 28 and Romans 11, which is don't be anti-Semitic, dummy. Okay. They're busy advancing their politi politicized Christianity agenda, which of course, Revelation already talked about in Revelation 17. You see, this is how bad it was. And it spreads all the way to the western provinces. And it spreads past the western provinces into the land of the barbarians. The plague. Because the barbarians are making incursions on Italy at this point right here. During those years. And yeah, they were repelled because the good generals that were under Ananias Pius continued to be good generals under Marcus Aurelius and his his own brother dies during this time. Dies just about here. That's 169. Okay? 
You see the problem? So look, look at the look at the the, the wryness of the text. You you need to be saved when you're sick. You need to be saved when you're fighting, and it's already been prepared, and it's being revealed to you right now how you're going to die. And of course, at the end of that black highlighted text is when Aurelius himself also dies. And nobody learned the lesson. So what happens? Okay, still as part of Apocalyptene, except you run that together with the preposition N, that's when Commodus comes to power. And everybody thinks once he comes to power, it's the Black Age of Rome. The last days, baby. You see? The last days. You see, I see how this all fits together to characterize the time, to tell you what was going on, to draw analogy between having faith in the wrong thing versus the... the silent, quiet, outside of Rome Christian who took his Bible with him, by the way, who's avoiding all these plagues, who's avoiding all these apostate Christians and just learning and living on Bible. And he's sitting there thinking of the same text, realizing it's wry application to all the apostates and to all the pagans. And he's escaping, see? His salvation is prepared too and being revealed at that time while he is still alive. And for everybody else, it is the last days. They're dying. And it would be appropriate, and in fact, a lot of people at the time thought that maybe the rapture would occur then, especially when Commodus came to power. He was, you know, antichrist as far as a lot of people were concerned. Actually, he wasn't as he didn't persecute the Christians as much as applied during you know his father's reign because his father was trying to restore Roman religion. All Commodus cared about was himself, and of course he's like 17, 18 when he comes to power. He's much younger than you know the the portrayal of Commodus in the, the movie um, Gladiator. I mean, the actors did a great job, and a lot of that movie was is good. I really liked the movie. But the characterization of Commodus as, as far as his age and how he came to power is totally wrong. It was Marcus Aurelius who had faith in his son and appointed him from a very early age to be the next Caesar. He should not have done that. Okay? He really shouldn't have. The scene between uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Richard Harris when Phoenix playing Commodus ends up killing Harris who was Marcus Aurelius. That scene was good, except that in real life, Commodus didn't kill his dad. His dad died of disease, and maybe of the plague, because he was with the troops at the time in the north, trying to fight these guys. Because this was through 69, 169, but they kept on invading. And that's another thing Leviticus 26 tells you. You're, when you're a bad, when you're unfaithful to God, which means you're not learning and living on his word, but instead making up your own words, when you're busy doing that, then he's going to judge you. And one of the judgments that you learn, um, my pastor called this the five cycles of discipline. The fourth one, leading to the fifth one, the fourth one was that the enemy invades your territory. That's how bad Christianity was. Now do you understand why Peter meters this section at 63 votes short? Okay? Do you understand why Peter's doing that? Unfortunately, I clicked the web page and I have to wait for it to go on. This was really insane for it to happen. But this is why Peter... why Peter characterizes this time as vote short, 63. 63 in its own way is worse than 56. <coughs> 56 implies there's potential. 63 means it's too late. There's a shortage. It ain't going to get made up. So that's why this particular period ends with 203. Ah, oh, crud. I can't even click near it without it 
calling up their stupid page. Oh, this is so aggravating. I'm sorry, I have to wait now. Why Peter is characterizing this as 203? 203 is a reference to Isaiah 53, specifically Isaiah 53, verse 4. And it, it's the, the actual Hebrew text is meaning temple down. That was Isaiah's depiction of 586 BC, a prophecy about the temple going down. Okay? And Peter is likening this period, ending with the first five years of Commodus, as analogous to temple down. Israel being so apostate, the temple has to be taken down. Now do you see why? Okay. Sorry. Now do you see why? That's why 203 is used. Now highlighted, now underlined in green because I clicked the link. Okay? That's why 63 is used. That's what this text is all telling you. Very poignantly, very much classical Greek drama style, very sotto voce, and yet very pointed and very detailed. And look how few words. This is what Greek drama was famous for. They, they like to use few words because everybody memorized the plays and memorized the text. And then when they were doing their boring jobs of low tech, they could remember the words and play with them. That's what you're supposed to do with scripture. That's what Irenaeus and Hegesippus and Justin Martyr, Hermas, Tajan, Tatian, Athenagoras, Tertullian, all those people were not doing this. So the ambulance in the background was coming for them, was coming for the Roman Empire with plagues, with incursion by the barbarians. And right here at the syllable, Lucius Verus dies. And then by here, Marcus Aurelius dies. And what does the world inherit? All that guarding that Antoninus Pius did is now undone by his successor Aurelius. Because coming to power is Commodus. See, the final stage of destruction, see, analogous to right here on the right hand side, 203, temple down. That's how it's, the time is characterized. Temple down. Israel so apostate that the enemy comes in and invades. And the plague is still coming in and invading during all this time. And by the way, you get a bad ruler too. So yeah, it's the last days. A lot of people got wiped out during this time. And the Christians were blamed for the plagues and the incursions because according to the pagans, the Christians were atheists. In other words, they didn't believe in the Greek gods, so they were forsaken by the gods. That's what atheists meant in Greek, forsaken by the gods, not merely not believing, forsaken. So temple down, because they really were forsaking the real God. You get this? Is this awesome text or what? See how much different is the meaning when you can relate the text here in Peter, which sounds real syrupy on the surface. Oh, because of the faith, be, with reference to salvation, made ready to be revealed in the last days. If that's all you read, you get nothing out of the text. But now aren't you getting a lot out of the text when you see the historical grounding and what Peter's really saying, especially with this link here on the right-hand side, okay? to 203, Isaiah 53, 4, 586 BC, first temple down, because Israel was so apostate. It's an analogy to church being so apostate. And honey, this is hard to believe, but it actually even goes downhill from here. And we'll pick that up in the next increment. Signing off for now.